Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be starting our new unit on social psychology, looking at all the ways the outside environment has an influence on how we think and act on a day-to-day -day basis. Social psychology is a really interesting pairing between the internal and external forces that play a role in individual thought and behavior. It was started by a group of psychologists who really felt that we were overemphasizing the impact that the internal cognitive processes had on individual behavior, and that we were really ignoring the power that situations can have in dictating how a person thinks and acts. I'd like you to consider, for example, how we respond in a situation that perhaps we've all been faced with at some time or another, and that is when we're driving in a car. Maybe you're the one driving, maybe it's a friend or family member, but I want you to think about those times when, say, a person cuts you off or is driving in a reckless or dangerous way. What are the things that we say or think about that person that we see driving in a way that is potentially dangerous? Maybe we call them names. Maybe we say they are reckless. Maybe we say they're stupid dangerous drivers, we are attributing the behavior that we see to that person's character. They are a bad person due to their bad driving. Now I want you to think, for example, times when you've made a mistake while driving. And we've all done it. Maybe we've accidentally cut someone off. We were running late to school or work and we decide to speed or zip around traffic. And what are the explanations that we give for ourselves when our behavior looks that way? We are running late. We are having a bad day. We are being influenced by some type of situational force that dictates our behavior. This is what we call in social psychology, the fundamental attributional error. And basically what it means is that when we look at other people's behavior, we have a tendency to overestimate a person's behavior based on personality traits, right? We say it's because of who they are as a person and we underestimate the situational forces that might influence their behavior in that situation. However, when we look at ourselves, we're more likely to look at those situational factors. So think about that next time you see a bad driver, someone who cuts you off, or speeds past you, if your first instinct is to call them a name or say something negative about who they are as a person, that is how we can notice and identify when we're using the fundamental attribution error ourselves. And so this is the essence of social psychology. How do these environmental factors influence a person's behavior and thought processes? How do we look at the external world and see how it has an influence on the internal processings of an individual. There are many social psychologists in the field of psychology today, but I'd like to take a look at three significant psychologists and their contribution to the field of social psychology. They are Solomon Ash, Stanley Milgram, and Phil Zimbardo, really three pioneers in the field of social psychology. So let's start by taking a look at Solomon Ash and the research he did to understand how situational forces can influence a person's behavior. Ash did a very simple experiment involving the perception of lengths of lines. So if you see here, we have a target line and then three sample lines right next to it. In this social psychology experiment, people would come into a lab with say, five, six, seven people seated at a table, and they would go down the line asking each person which line, A, B, or C, matches the original. And the first few turns would go very, very normally. Each person would give the correct answer, followed by the next person, and so on. About three turns into this line perception experiment, something really strange starts to happen, where all of a sudden, every person in the group starts giving a wrong answer. The reason is because everybody in the experiment, except for one person, is a confederate. They are a part of the experiment. They were told to give a wrong answer to see how the subject would respond. In large groups, 
three or more people typically, what we start to see is that person becomes influenced by the group. They will also give a wrong answer based on what everybody else in the group is saying. If the group is unanimous, the subject is more likely to conform and go along with the group. So Solomon Ash is one of our first conformity researchers. He wanted to understand conformity and why we have a tendency to go with groups. Why do we follow the crowd instead of sticking to our own personal beliefs? Why would someone give a wrong answer in this line test when they know the group is wrong? And Solomon Ash found in interviewing the people afterwards why they conformed really fell into two major categories. They either conformed due to normative social influence or informational social influence. Normative social influence is when a person conforms in order to be accepted by the group. So when we want to go along with others just to not cause any problems, uh, just because we value the group and want to be accepted and be a part of the group, even if we think they're wrong, we still go along with it. That is considered normative social influence. Informational social influence is when a person conforms because they actually believe the group is right. Some people in this experiment actually started to question what they saw with their own eyes and thought that the rest of the group must be correct because there's so many of them giving the same answer that it led them to believe that what they were seeing was incorrect and that is why they conformed with the group. So sometimes that large group majority causes us to question what we think we know and we change our beliefs based on what the group is saying. So that is one of the first studies done in social psychology looking at how the environment, in this case a group of people, can influence an individual's behavior and helps us to understand concepts like conformity. Stanley Milgram was looking at another aspect of social psychology and he wanted to understand obedience to authority. Why in so many cultures throughout our society is it a norm that we obey authority figures? And to what degree will we actually go along and obey authority, even when we think they are wrong or even when it might cause harm to another person? So Stanley Milgram created his infamous shock experiment where they had a learner and a teacher conducting a word pair test. And every time the learner gave a wrong response, they were supposed to administer an electric shock on a shock board. The electric shock started very small and got increasingly more intense as each wrong answer progressed. Now, in this experiment, no one was actually being harmed. The idea was to look at how far a person would go when the man in the white lab coat said, you must continue. It's imperative that you continue. For the sake of the experiment, we need you to continue. How far would a person go to administering pain to another individual who is screaming out for help on the other side of the wall. What Milgram found that shocked society was that two thirds of individuals went all the way down the shock board, went to the complete end, even when the person on the other side stopped responding, causing a person to think that they could have passed out or something horrible happened to them. How far do people really go when it comes to obeying authority? And our final landmark experiment in social psychology is the Stanford Prison Experiment, done by Phil Zimbardo. In this experiment, college-aged young men were taken to the basement of Stanford University and divided into two groups, either prisoners or prison guards. Zimbardo wanted to study the effects of prison life on these young men in what was supposed to be a two-week study. It ended up being canceled early due to the psychological stress placed on the prisoners. The prison guards became so evil and sadistic as each day progressed with their treatment towards the prisoners that Zimbardo felt that this was a perfect example of how the situation can change a person's behavior. When a person takes on a role such as becoming a prison guard. They take on the uniform, the anonymity behind the sunglasses, and are given power with very little rules or regulations to follow, that even the most average normal individual will abuse that power to the point of causing harm to others. So these are three really significant cases in the field of social psychology. Conformity, obedience to authority, the power of roles 
and the fundamental attribution error are really where our journey in social psychology begin. We're going to continue looking at a series of social psychic concepts from de-individuation to group polarization, prejudice, and even with love and helping. And hopefully this helps us understand why ourselves and others are influenced by social situations that change the way that we think and act as well. So we'll go ahead and stop there for today. And next time we're gonna dive into persuasion and how groups influence behavior in a variety of ways. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, remember, be kind to your mind.